What's going on everyone? Honda Fit for Adventure here, and today I'm going to show you how to remove the C-pillar or quarter trim covers and the rear seat belts on a third generation Honda Fit. To do this, we will be removing the lower trim panel first. You can get away with just detaching the upper portion of the lower trim panel, but it is only a few more clips to remove the full panel, so I would suggest undoing that. I already have a step-by-step -step removal video for this panel on my channel, so to save some time, we're going to skip past this step. I'll pin a link to the lower trim panel removal video in the comments below. Please remember to remove the cargo light before removing the panel. Failure to remove the cargo light before removing the panel may result in damage to the wiring. After removing or detaching most of the lower trim piece, our next step is to remove the rear seatbelt. We'll start at the bottom end using a 14 millimeter socket. Now I'm going to keep my rear seat belts out of the car, but if you plan on reinstalling them, make sure to torque them back down to 24 foot pounds of torque. After the bottom end of the seat belt has been removed, it's time to remove the seat belt bracket that's attached to the C pillar. Remove the plastic cover by prying up from the bottom. You can do this with a flathead screwdriver, but I would recommend a plastic pry tool or old gift card to prevent any scratches. Use a 14 millimeter socket and some muscle to remove the C-pillar bolt. With the bolt removed and the bracket out of the way, the next step is to remove the seatbelt cover. There's about five tabs holding the seatbelt cover into place. It's easy to remove, just make sure to apply even pressure across the cover while removing. With the slit and the seatbelt cover, it is very easy to twist or bend while removing and you don't want it to break. Now that the cover is removed, we can slide the seatbelt through the hole of the seat pillar. Removing the seat pillar. To take off the seat pillar, we need to pop it off the frame of the car by detaching it from six connection points. There's three on the right, one on the bottom, and two on the left. Please note that the driver's side seat pillar only has five connection points, three on the left and two on the right. Once the seat pillar has been popped loose from the frame of the car, it may fall loose or you may need to slide it downward first. Before we reinstall the seat pillar, I'm going to go ahead and remove the rest of my seat belt. You do not need to do this, but if you do, you're going to need a 10 millimeter and 14 millimeter socket. You're also going to need to look up the torque specs for these bolts because I was unable to find them. Insulation. To reinstall the C-pillar, slide the panel upward into place and into position. Before snapping the panel down, make sure the hole for the seatbelt bracket is lined up correctly with the threads on the frame of the car. You might need to hold the C-pillar in place while snapping it back down to keep the hole lined up with the threads. Once the seat pillar is secured, we can go ahead and reattach the seat belt. Slide the seat belt along with the cover through the hole of the seat pillar and tighten both ends of the belt back into position using 24 foot pounds of torque. Snap the seat belt and bolt cover back on and then reinstall the lower trim panel.
driver's side uncut. Now this whole process is going to take you about 10 to 15 minutes. I already have some things removed from my trunk area, so it's going to take me a little less time. I'm going to start off by removing the weather stripping from most of the rear door, and then remove the lower trim panel. If you're removing the passenger side panel, remember to remove that cargo light first. Now I'm able to pop off and remove my panel from here, but you'll need to do a few more things first in order to remove yours. This includes removing the spare tire cover, detaching the lower portion of the panel from the trim of the trunk and your floorboard carpet. These steps can be seen in the step-by-step -step removal video pinned in the comments below. Don't mind the wires, they go to the fuel pump of my secondary fuel tank. With the panel removed, we can now remove the bolts securing down the seatbelt using a 14mm socket. I would suggest removing the lower end of the seatbelt first, but it looks like I'm going to remove the C-pillar bolt first. This is where you would remove the seatbelt cover and shove the seatbelt through the C-pillar before popping it off the frame of the car, but I'm going to remove the seatbelt altogether, so I'm going to do that first. To remove the rest of the rear seat belt, you're going to need to remove a 10 mm and 14 mm bolt. This time you'll notice that the seat belt hub is in a slightly different position than the passenger side. With the pillar now removed, we can also see that the driver side seat pillar only has five push-in tabs, while the passenger side has six. Two on one side, three on the other, but not one on the bottom. The tab positions are exactly in the same place, but the driver side does not have one at the bottom. Since this is off, let me tuck up that dash cam cable. Here I'm tucking up my rear dash cam cable before snapping the seat pillar back into place. Once again, you can see that I'm holding the pillar down into position, making sure that the holes stay lined up with the threads of the car before snapping it back into place. Once the C-pillar is attached, you can shove the seatbelt back through the hole of the pillar and bolt it back down using 24 foot-pounds of torque. Put the seatbelt bracket cover back on and tighten down the other end of the seatbelt. Two tabs, slide it down, and then snap it in. 
So if you take it off before, pull the two clips out. Since I'm going to leave my seat belts out, I'm going to cover this hole later with a plastic plug. But let's get the panel back in. No, there goes the stripping. Don't forget to put the belt cover back on, and now it's time to reattach the lower panel. Snap it back down and reattach the lower portion to the carpet and trim pieces, and you're all set. broke seven minutes and 30 seconds if you've been following along with my channel you know that i like to keep track of every pound added and removed to the car so to end today's video i'll give you the total weight savings by removing all three rear seat belts with the rear driver passenger and her seat belt removed we saved 16. six pounds have a good night and thank you all for watching